sorry, I do not speak uh, for, uh, Spanish, so I will introduce myself and our company in English. Cinema uh, Robotics is manufacturing spray robots since now 29 years. So next year we will hopefully make the, the 30th anniversary. <coughs> And as I told you, we are manufacturing spraying robots and developing spraying solutions for any kind of application. So we cover currently, let's say, 359 degrees of every kind of application. Liquid, powder coating, resin application, gel coat, whatever. We are focusing today our introduction here into the powder coating and... Good. Um, let's go forward. CMA Robotics is developing since again 29 years our own spraying robots. We have different kind of opla, sorry, different kind of uh, robots. We do have our own self-teaching robots. We do have point-to-point uh, -point robots. Here in this description you see them as the same in the same uh, dimension. In reality they are from middle size to large size uh, uh, dimensions so we can spray small items as we can spray a complete train. But there's no issue to even to uh, have these units in uh, reversed application on 7th axis, 8th axis, so to extend the working area of the application. If you don't understand everything and you say, please, on the bottom, please ask me. Uh, an important thing, an important part of our job is to manufacture <laughs> robots which are committed to the local rules and to the local uh, applications that are necessary. So, since ever our company is certified uh, ISO 9001 to maintain uh, quality in our operation, an important thing is that most of our robots are ATEX certified. ATEX certified, in this case, powder coating for zone 21 and 22, for liquid, zone 1 and zone 2. Um, this is not very common that you can have uh, powder coating robots in this application, even in self-teaching as we do. Having that, we are able to provide, we provided in these 29 years, almost, uh, well, this presentation has been made in the beginning of 2020, uh, one, so we are currently now at uh, 1,700 units sold everywhere in the world. And as you see, we are covering, again, uh, a huge part of the application in the wood, in the metal sector, plastic sector, in automotive, uh, gel coat application, powder coating, resin, you name, you name the case and usually we got already a solution provided. And a very important thing in our work is that I'm not offering here today a robot. I'm offering to our audience and to our customers the possibility to find a solution for their issues. You get a problem and possibly we get to you a solution that fits as good as possible to what you need. I don't say, uh, it would be stupid to say we can solve every problem. Usually not, but we can integrate ourselves in current application, in new uh, solutions, integrating our work with the reciprocator from any brand, with a, with a spray gun from any brand, with a conveyor system of any brand. So we are fully committed to integrate ourselves in, a, in any kind of application. Then it's a conveyor, we do have a robotic application which are, let's say, plug and play of our solutions with integrated carousel. So, according to what you need, we can supply what you get. I'm focusing today my uh, introduction in, um, 
in a specific field which is uh, currently asked in a lot of countries. For example, in a box spraying project. It means that if you have to spray a metal box like a, a, an electrical cabinet or furniture, the, uh, one of the problematics of this application, especially in powder coating, is that the item, you never know where it is. It means that it hangs in different heights, it can, it can have different sizes, it can have different inclination, because uh, especially in the powder coating you have to flush the item before, you have to pre-treat the, the item before I can put the, co the powder coater on it. Having this problematic uh, analyzed, we made a solution that is based on an integrated system with, with our robot, with the powder coating application in reciprocating uh, that comes after. And the issue was here to find where the item is and where exactly it's supposed to be. The robot, in that case, does not make the complete job. That's important. We do operate in an integrated way with the reciprocator that makes, let, let's say, the, the reciprocator makes the external surface. Here, all the sizes that are currently current covered. Usually, you need in this application, you would need a, a manual touch up. It means that the, the, there is a, an operator that has to spray inside the edges. You name uh, there was uh, for an, a note that what happens with the Faraday cage. The Faraday cage is a problem in a powder coating application. So unless, oh sorry, uh, as far as you work with flat items, you don't need a robot. Simple. You work with reciprocate, and they are far more efficient and far more faster than a robot. But if in, in the moment you start to have corners, angles. Uh, bent item, bent uh, parts, you start to have problems with the pre-touch. You need to pre-touch them properly. Okay? In this special case, we do have uh, the possibility to use our own uh, so-called AXPS systems, which are, uh, let's say, a family name of all kind of vision systems that we develop in-house. It means that I, I'm placing before the, just before the, the spray boot um, a barrier um, that can be a 2D or 3D barrier that tells me, to tells not me obviously, but tells to the system, to my robot, where the item is. Where is the opening, where is, in, where, how many items I have in height and so on and so on and so on. Um, I will not bother you with uh, to, to see and description of all these things. It's, it's a large family. We do need one day, one, one, two days to explain everything. That's not the point here. Here, you can find all those videos also on the YouTube where we show these uh, different applications separately. Anyway, the box brain project was made to, according to the customer uh, request, to fulfill some features. We do have to spray boxes and metal without internal elements, so welded reinforcement and all of this stuff is not, cannot be seen. The doors and some panels which are uh, placed outside of the item. We are not able to distinguish, example, vertical uh, so panels which are welded inside because they are too, too thin but this would be a problem even if you take if you have a manual touch so we do have metal doors of the same switchboards we do obviously spray the complete uh, cabinet we display the dimension uh, we do spray panels and items which can reach up a height of 2.2 meters which are standard for any electrical cabinet in this 2.2 meters, we can have up to four items. So we can one large, two smaller items, and three, three and four different items in different heights. Okay. 
Uh, we mentioned here that we need further painting, but from my point of view, I can easily, I can easily go on a, this could be a, a powder coating as a liquid application for the robot that does not make any difference. We have a continuous advancement. Why? Because it could be also that we have a rotation device and we stop and go. This can be also possible. In this specific case, the reciprocator system was not provided, so we provide a robot for the touch-up, but we provide them uh, uh, additional robots to spray the external surface, okay? In this case, the uh, existing hanging conveyor includes two boots for the complete finish application, movement is continuous, and so on, and so on. We placed here Therefore, only for the touch-up, I made this presentation a little bit more concentrated on that application, with a high-performance GR680 model, ATEX obviously powder certified, which is bounded to this uh, self-generating programming system, Vision XPS. It's important. In this case, you don't need to program. You hang the item, you tell to the system, you have to applicate the powder on this family of products and then the system detects automatically what is placed on the conveyor. So there is no programming necessary. And that's a huge improvement in any kind of programming system we already talked about before. Okay. Um, Auto-generation is not self-teaching. Auto generation means the robot decides by, the, by himself what to do. And the boxes can be hanged more or less. Now, this, list, this was a little bit, let's say, for testing purposes, it was a little bit improved. So we hang them really in, in a free space some, somehow and somewhere, just to, to see where was the limit of the application. And the limit was quite high. Okay? Obviously, you cannot is not able to distinguish if you place the box backside. I mean, if I if I have to have the opening from this part, you cannot you cannot uh, the system is not able to distinguish open from closed. Okay, it's something we can work uh, live with it, I suppose. The auto generation system in this case, let's see, it should work. Oh, there we, there we see. The robot, in this case, so applicates the powder where it's necessary, inside the edges of the box. How you have to, how the robot has to applicate is not decided by CMA, it's decided by the customer that has the opportunity with this tool to decide exactly when, how much, at what distance, at what speed, uh, you have to spray internally, externally, you have to work before uh, up and down and then horizontally. You, so any application that the customer requires has been already implemented. Then the customer uses what he wants. Okay? It means that in the beginning you need a little bit of time to set up everything. But once the setup has been done properly, the operator is not necessary. Or it's not more necessary to make all the job. He's checking up, he controls, he can modify, because you can also have a pos I don't know, tomorrow you change everything, you change powder, you change powder, uh, color. With the color you need to maybe to go a little bit further, a little bit closer, a little bit far away. You can modify any aspect of this application. Let's go further. What you see was theory. This is now the real thing. Again, what you see here has been not programmed. So the robot goes exactly where it's supposed to. Then we can talk about that we don't that we use a lot of powder, but we are not powder coated. So this was a testing facility in CMA, a testing. But you see the two boxes are hanged random in a different position, in a different angulation, in a different inclination. And the robot tries, obviously, to do his best to applicate it properly. 
and he goes, now, as you see, he goes, he makes this small movement up and down. This is not decided by CMA. If the customer wants to go three times on the same spot, okay, he has to implement this operation on the robot. Okay. He can also say up to an uh, uh, example, up to a depth of, sorry, I, I suppose I have some uh, shape. If I'm working here, Tell him up to a, this, uh, a depth of 150 millimeters, you make one step. From 150 to 250, you make a double shot. To 400 millimeters, you make three times. I don't know. Okay. Again, it's not decided by CMA. It's completely implementable by the customers up to this point. That's the auto generation. It works pretty good on any kind of application. Now. Since we are working with powder coating, coating applications since ever, and since the world is turning on and we need to implement new technologies, let's introduce you this technology after we can discuss downstairs in a, in a very, uh, in, a, in a more, um, let's say, applicated way. This technology is called VR tracking. This is the new self-teaching that is, it has been introduced in April 2022 from CMA Robotics. We are not the only company that makes this kind of application. There are Fanuc and ABB are working on this, that technology as well since a lot of years. We introduced this technology this year, this year after two years of development. What is the, the feeling of this? The self-teaching application that we also have, we have self-teaching robots since ever. We have been born to when we manufacture the, the first spraying robots in 90, uh, 1994, 95. We manufacture uh, our Robby 5 robots, Robby 6, two spraying chairs that were uh, booming that time. Okay, <coughs> where you simply take the item, you take the robot and you spray and the robot teach. As uh, we have also our competitors offers. It's not, so it's not nothing new, it's a technology that exists. This technology has limits. The limit is myself. I cannot make items that are larger than what I can reach. Okay, and the result will be, obviously, how good I am to use the robot. So the self-teaching has limitation. It has also some mechanical limitation. First of all, it takes a little bit more time in, in maintenance because the robots, which I have even ours, do have a, a complex mechanic to have this movement with all the chains and all this. Stuff. So all this mechanical part need to be, uh, uh, you call it, um, maintenance. In a, in a, <coughs> say they not they, they need more maintenance than a usual uh, let's say under industrial robot. Okay, the repeatability of a of a safety teaching robot is around two, one point five to three centimeters. So doing the job that you that uh, the colleague told before to go into the corner. And being able to go very close to avoid the fire decades is quite impossible with the self-teaching robot because the self-teaching robot is not very precise, which is quite enough if you work like this. But if you have to work in the, in the, into the corners to avoid the fire decades, it's an issue. Okay? Having these problematics since ever, and we know them before, obviously because we are manufacturing in those robots as well, we develop this system. This system is based on the technology that you maybe know from the Wii, uh, from Nintendo, you know, to, 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 to play uh, with uh, tennis and all these kind of things where you have a simulated movement. But we introduced this technology to obtain what? I'm having a spraying robot. I'm having uh, this tool. I'm taking off the gun from the, from the robot I'm placing the gun on my tool, which looks like a gun. It looks like a small... Uh, it's like a shotgun, okay? To avoid movements that are unexpected. And then you simply spray with this tool your item. 
and you make your movements. Since the limitations are, are the same, I cannot make larger items than what I, I can do, this system is based on the offline program. If you don't know, I will explain you after what it is. Uh, there are, there is uh, again, a lot of to, to things to, uh, to describe. Anyway, you create with the movement of the operator, you create uh, those lines and those, dot, those dots. Those dots are implemented every uh, five milliseconds in the air. So he creates a, 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 a cloud of points that are connected by our system. Those dots, those red dots, are then can be modified on the offline in any position. So if you see that, I don't know, this dot should be not there, but uh, two centimeters up and down, and I don't know where should, you move this. You can modify this position without any problem. Okay? And this allows you to work, to extend your working area into a, a simulated way. So I can, make, I can make a very large item without any problem. Obviously, I have to work inside the working area of, working area of my robot. If my robot has a working area of one, one meter by two, I cannot make out larger items. But in this case, I can use even a very large robot, which is not being designed for self-teaching, to work with this technology. And this is then the result. I mean, hopla. Yeah, thank you. So the operator makes before the power coding application. Then you can say, okay, this is good or this is not good, I don't care. Because if it's not good, you can correct it or you do it again or you correct it on the screen. By the way, all this movement sh shall not be done on the line. So you can, e you can start to, you can continue to produce without any problem. Meanwhile, in a different position, you can set up this programming without any problem. You take your time, you make all the movements, you make all the errors, you make all the, whatever it takes to set up in a proper way your, your programming. Okay? This is just a glimpse of what we can offer. But uh, to have a complete uh, talk, please be nice. I'm downstairs, we can have a, a conversation about every kind of questions that you might have. Okay? Thank you.